What's happening everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam, this is Van City Audi. And the first thing I have to do before anything else is thank those people that donated to make this video happen. I told you all some time ago I was not going to be doing another fuel comparison. I got suckered back in. <laughs> I put out a request to help pay for the funds, for the fuel, for the dyno time here because it cost me a lot of money to do these uh, dyno tests. So I'm really, really thankful to all of you that did donate to my GoFundMe. Thank you very much. What we're going to be doing today is testing to find out just how good the brand new to the lower mainland of British Columbia Shell's 93 octane fuel is. I've done a bunch of fuel comparisons with the old formula, we'll say. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest, if it's a new formula, if it's different additives. It definitely smells different, and it actually has ethanol in it now. I did a ethanol test of all of the fuels we're going to be testing today. We're going to start out with a baseline run using Chevron 94 mixed with 10% ethanol. So that is a base Chevron 94 with E85 added to it to bring it up to a 10% ethanol level meaning that it's probably sitting at a 95, 96 octane, maybe not quite that high, but a smidge more than it would be because of that additional ethanol. Unlike the other fuels that already have ethanol in them, that's what their octane level is. It's 93 octane with ethanol already in it. The 91 um, octane fuel from Shell already has ethanol in it. Today we're going to be using a 2018, is it Mike? 19, 2019 Audi RS3, some five pot noises for a fuel comparison video. Much, much more pleasant than that three liter supercharged V6 of mine that we had previously. So we're gonna be using a different car for today. We're gonna to be testing four different fuels, five including the base file that we have right now of the Chevron 94 and the E10. I'll go through the fuels that we're gonna be testing. I'll show you their ethanol contents. We'll get to these dyno tests. Once we've done each dyno, I'll actually show you the log and see what kind of timing correction we see. And we'll also go through the results of wheel horsepower and foot pounds of torque that we see for each run using each fuel. We'll probably be doing about three, four, five runs on each fuel. We have to see how much the ECU adapts. We kind of go with the way that we see how high it goes and then when it starts pulling timing we know we've seen the maximum amount that this fuel is going to make. So I'll show you those fuels right now and we'll get to the dynos. Here are the four different fuels we're going to be testing today. We're going to be doing Shell 93 which I manually tested at seven and a half percent ethanol. Then we're going to be dropping it down to Shell 91 which tested at five percent ethanol. Then we're going to be jumping over to Chevron 94 which always has zero percent ethanol and the really weird one guys Chevron 91 which I did multiple tests on and it only had zero percent ethanol I've never seen that before Now that we have those baseline runs done, I just want to fill you in on the RS3. It is completely stock in terms of tune. For hardware, the only change that has been made, it is utilizing Unitronics mid-pipes. That is it. So just for a sound mod. Besides that, it's stock. The numbers we're going to be going through today in today's fuel comparison are Mustang uncorrected numbers. So for those of you that are like, oh my god, there's something wrong with that RS3. Why is it making such low power? uncorrected Mustang numbers. Here's the graph on the first set of numbers utilizing that Chevron 94 mixed with 10% ethanol. We saw 337 wheel horsepower and 316 foot pounds of torque. There is the graph. You're going to get a lot of these hibbity jibbities mainly because of the Haldex unit sending power rear, front, rear, front. They do not like being on the dyno, but there they are, the first set of numbers, 337 and 316. 
Here's the log using Chevron 94 with that additional 10% of ethanol added into it. We took the car up to just shy of 7,000 RPM for all of these runs, all done in fourth gear. The intake air temp for this particular run was 34.5 degrees. We did not allow for anything greater than 36 degrees Celsius for all of these runs, so I won't bother going through the IETs. I just wanted you to know that 36 was the maximum allowable number. At 2200 RPM, we saw one degree of ignition correction at a cylinder two and as we creep up through the rpms we see all five cylinders having a very very small amount of correction up until we get to around 6500 rpm where we're seeing three different cylinders having correction but still only a maximum of 1.25 degrees very very small amounts of correction we could get rid of those corrections if we added more ethanol but that was not the point of this video in terms of peak ignition advance we we saw 15.5 degrees on this particular fuel. There we have the runs using Shell's brand new V-Power Nitro Plus 93 octane fuel. A lot of hype in the lower mainland. A lot of people extremely excited. Other people have done testing. Other people have showcased it, but I wanted to do this testing myself to see just how good it really is. And now we know. Here's the run using that Shell 93 and unbelievable results. 333 wheel horsepower, making a bit more torque at 319. The graphs look almost identical. You can see a couple of peaks and valleys that are very close, but not quite as good as the Chevron 94 blended with 10% ethanol, but an extremely close amount of power for a straight pump gas and validating all those people that said this new fuel is the real deal. Here's the log for Shell 93, and for the rest of the logs, I'll just be going over the ignition correction we saw, as well as the peak ignition advance. At 2100 RPM, we see four out of the five cylinders having correction, with a maximum of 1.5 degrees. We get up to 4500 RPM, and we are seeing a maximum of 2.25 degrees being pulled from cylinder four, which is the most correction we saw throughout the entire run, which is still very impressive for just a straight pump gas. Up top, we are seeing all five cylinders having correction, with a maximum of 1.75 coming from cylinder four. Very, very impressive. In terms of peak ignition advance, we saw 14 degrees with this Shell 93. So we just ran the car with Shell 91 octane fuel. And if you guys are subscribers, you may have seen my previous fuel comparison videos. This was the absolute worst fuel that we tested. It was all the time, terrible results. We never saw positive results out of Shell 91. Shell has gone above and beyond. They've turned the tables on us. It is performing much better. Before I show you guys these results though, I wanted to fill you in. We did four runs. This is the best run. It was a clean run, but each of the other runs we did was significantly less power and I saw much more timing correction. So I'm not 100% sure why. I'll go over the logs with you guys just after this, but just strange that we got this one really clean run and then the other ones we saw 10 wheel horsepower less. So it figured itself out. This is where we landed. This was the cleanest run. Another very strong performance from Shell 91 this time, managing 328 wheel horsepower and the exact same torque at 319. The graphs almost look identical, except where the octane shorts up top and you do not make as much power and as much torque up top. But as I mentioned already, other runs were 10 wheel horsepower less than this, but this is the cleanest of the day. Here's the log of Shell 91, and it was an odd one at that. We saw four different cylinders having ignition correction as low as 1800 RPM, but then in the middle of the run, we see zero correction, something we did not see with any of the other fuels, so quite bizarre. Once we get up to 5400 RPM, we're still only seeing one degree being pulled from two of the cylinders at the very, very top of the run, 1.25 being pulled from cylinder five. Very, very strange considering we made 10 
10-wheel horsepower less on the run previous to this and significantly more timing correction. In terms of ignition advance, we saw 10.5 degrees on this run. The runs before this, we saw 7.5 and 8 using this Shell 91. Now the very, very first time we came out here was to put to rest a myth, an urban legend we'll say, in the lower mainland that Shell 91 was a better quality fuel than Chevron 94, had better knock resistance, could make more horsepower. I squashed that many times over, showing that Chevron 94 was better than Shell 91 in many regards, at least in terms of the cars that I was testing it on. Now, we had the first time Chevron 94 versus the new formula from Shell. Oh, how the tables have drastically turned. A massive hit in wheel horsepower and torque. Chevron 94 dropping down to 310 wheel horsepower and 302 foot-pounds of torque, dropping down from what we saw with Shell 91. Look at that. Not even remotely close throughout the entire pull. It was not able to provide the same amount of knock resistance and was making significantly less power. Here's the log using Chevron 94 at 2000 RPM. We are seeing ignition correction out of four of the five cylinders. It gets worse, but not a heck of a lot worse. Once we get higher in the RPMs, right in the mid range, we're still seeing correction out of all five cylinders, but still only a maximum of 1.5 degrees. And it definitely gets better higher up top. We see correction in all five, but still only 1.25, 1.25, 1, 1 and a half a degree. Still nothing crazy. In terms of peak ignition advance, we saw 9 degrees, which doesn't make a lot of sense to us considering it made significantly less power than we saw on Shell 91. So like I mentioned earlier, holy moly the tables have turned. In our previous videos, we saw huge hits from Chevron 94 down to Shell 91, as much as 39 wheel horsepower in previous videos. Not quite as much today, but wow, Shell has really stepped up their game. Now for the final fuel of the day, we're tossing in Chevron 91. And for the very first time, their Chevron 91 contains no ethanol. I've never tested that before. The lowest I've ever tested before is 4% in this fuel, so I'm scared to see how much less horsepower and how much less knock resistance Chevron 91 offers compared to the shell fuels. Final runs of the day have been completed utilizing Chevron 91 and boy oh boy have they fallen. Final fuel today, producing the lowest power, 307 wheel horsepower, 297 foot-pounds of torque versus the Chevron 94 of 310 and 302. The graphs are virtually identical, very, very similar. Final fuel of the day, Chevron 91 at 1800 RPM. We are seeing correction out of four of the five cylinders, one degree coming from cylinder three, which is the highest out of the five cylinders. Then we get up into the mid range where we see a maximum of 1.75 being pulled from cylinder two, but still correction in all five cylinders. It gets a little better up top at the top of the run, 1.75 being pulled from cylinder four, as well as correction in all the other cylinders, which still is not a lot of correction considering the low amount of power we made. In terms of peak ignition advance though, we only saw 8 degrees, which is the lowest out of all the fuels we tested. Here's the final graph of the day for you guys. From the very best fuel we tested to the worst, this is a comparison of what we saw utilizing the blend of Chevron 94 and 10% ethanol at 337 wheel horsepower and 316 foot-pounds of torque versus what we saw with just Chevron 91 at 307 and 297. Look at the difference in those graphs. As much as the power curves are almost identical, 
a massive, massive difference in terms of wheel horsepower and torque just from different fuels. So to wrap this up today, I put it all on a whiteboard for you guys, showing the results of the first fuel to the last Chevron 94 and E10, Shell 93, Shell 91, Chevron 94, Chevron 91 to wrap it up. And the highest to lowest wheel horsepower difference of 30 from the first fuel we tested to the last. Then we have a difference of 19 foot pounds of torque from the first fuel we tested to the last. Proving yet again, it is extremely important the type of fuel you use in your performance automobile. Well, that wraps it up here at Racing Greed, guys. Shell has bounced back in a big way. Their fuel provided much better knock resistance, provided much better octane and much more power on the dyno today in a stock RS3. Here at Racing Greed on their Mustang uncorrected dyno. Very, very interesting results and very impressed. I don't want to take credit, but I kind of do. Did Shell hear about my fuel comparisons in the past? Did they realize that their fuel was not up to par with what people were asking of their cars? I don't know, guys. Could it be true? My ego wants to think it's true. <laughs> probably didn't have anything to do with it but their fuel is a very very good now shell v power nitro plus 93 and 91 octane i highly recommend it to any performance enthusiasts in the lower mainland where it is available to you chevron time to step it up a notch let's let's bring up the level of performance so you can match shell it would be great if more fuel was better quality here in the lower mainland and we didn't have to be extremely particular about where we were going to go to get our fuel because some is so much better than others. A huge thanks again to all those people that donated to make this video a reality. It's great to know that I wasn't stuck with a few hundred dollar bills of fuel and dyno time like I have been in the past. So thank you so much. Thank you to Tommy here at Racing Greed who was the dyno operator. I appreciate his time. Mike for the use of his 2019 Audi RS3. It was a blast here in a five cylinder rather than my three liter supercharged V6 that we've heard in the past. Thank you all for watching guys and until next time. Take care.